Hi guys, Dan Cooper here from Pro Tools Expert, and I'm back with another 15 minute mix challenge video, this time using the Greg Wells Signature Series by Waves, that currently only has four plugins in it. We've got the tone centric, voice centric, piano centric, and mix centric. Now these four plugins share a common control, and that is this large dial in the middle. And this really is the bread and butter of all these plugins. You know, you just wind in how much of an effect you want. But this isn't just one effects on these plugins. No, it's not like a zero to 100%, you know, how much do you want, wet, dry kind of thing. There's different processes that kick in depending on the amounts of the intensity or the process that you wind in. So you might hear something a little bit different if you're sort of at three quarters, say, to being about a quarter way in. There's different things going on. And you'll hear some of that whilst I'm doing some of this mixing. Now, two things just to point out quickly about these plugins. The first is really, it's kind of like a way of finding the sweet spot with this. Now, we have to make sure that we get this input level here in the green. That means that the input is absolutely correct for these plugins to work at their best. Once you've got that, we've got this dial, as I said, and how I like to use these is sort of like, you know, get it to a point where you think the effect is too much and then back it off to an area where you can't quite hear it and then just kind of sweep between because that'll give you the range uh, and eventually you'll find where these plugins work at their best. Another user tip is if you hold down the shift key and click on another control, let's say like the delay here, if I increase the delay, you can see it's also increasing the intensity. Or if I pull back the delay, it'll pull back on the intensity, which is really quite cool. Now you're probably thinking, Dan, you can't mix a song with just these four plugins. Well, I bet you can, and let's find out. So I've got a song here, it's written by my wife, it's called Have a Heart. Simple lineup, drums, they were programmed, live bass, two guitars, live upright piano, and a four part backing vocal by yours truly. So let's have a little listen, and then I'll start that clock and get mixing. Okay, start the clock. Now I've got the drums routed through to an auxiliary and I'm going to do most of the work to the drums there as these were programmed drums and they kind of sound mix ready already. They just need a little bit more life into them. So let's have a listen to the drums and the bass in isolation. Okay, what I'm going to use, first plugin, is the Mix Centric. Now this is really quite good on masters and mix buses. So Let's put it to work. Now the input is looking between the yellow and the green, so I'm going to stick with that. And let's just increase the process. That's just too much to me, so let's bring it back. Sounds good. Do a little bypass. Yeah, it's definitely increased the, the volume and it's compression and limiting. But there's no gain reduction yet. If I push it further. Yeah, it's just too much to my ears. Bypass. Okay, sounds good. Let's move across to the bass. 
Now on the bass, I'm going to use the tone centric, and this just basically adds a sort of analog vibe and warmth. And you'll hear that down the bottom end, really, right down the lower ends, and uh, you'll hear it sort of saturating the top ever so slightly. Let's have a little listen to what this can do. Let's poke it with a stick. There, you can hear a bit of saturation there. I like it, but again, it's a bit too much to my ears. Roll it back. Bypass. Yeah, subtle, but it's there. I like it. Let's move across. And <laughs> I'm going to use the mix centric again on the bass and just to sort of, again, bring this in line with what the drums are doing a bit. So let's see what we can do. Bring the input down just a touch. Sounds good. Let's bring the input down just a touch. Bypass. Nice. Now, I've got two guitars in this. First being sort of the main thrust of the rhythm. It's on a Gretsch, and the second is a Tele. They're both clean. Now, I want the Gretsch guitar, the main guitar. Let's just play it quickly here. I want this to be the focus of the song. The second guitar being the Tele this. I want that to be sort of in the back a little bit, but I love the tone of it. I don't really want to adjust it. But together, they sound a little bit, well, one needs its place and the other just needs to back off a little bit. So to do this, I'm going to use the voice centric because it's got a doubler feature. And I'm going to use this doubler, or at least I hope it's going to work, just to widen the main guitar so the telecaster can kind of set up the middle a little bit more. So, let's try it. Perfect. Did you hear that? It just pushed out to the sides. Bypass. Nice. Let's try some reverb. Beautiful. Let's try push some intensity into that guitar, see what it does. All right, bypass. Nice, nice, that's placed it well. So, for the telly, I'm going to use, again, the mix centric, just to sort of, like I did with the drums and the bass, just to sort of bind it together a little bit. Let's have a listen. Nice. Again, it's only subtle, but just sits it in the mix. So let's move across now to the keyboards. The keyboards at the uh, instrumental here is where they're all playing together. All nice parts, but they're not really working well together tonally. The piano sounds a bit dull, the Hammond sounds a bit bright, and even though the Rose is doing something really simple, I want to hear it more. But I don't really want to do that by turning it up. So let me just play those keyboard sections for you in isolation. You'll hear what I'm on about. OK, and you guessed it. For this, I'm going to use the piano centric. Now, let's start with the piano. I want to bring this out of the mix a little bit more, a little bit brighter, sort of a better space maybe around it. So let's just try. All right, let's bring the input down. Cool, we're in the green.
That sounds nice. So now, when this dial is set up the middle, the plug-in's in essence in some bypass. It's not doing anything. Now, if we wind it to the right, as you heard, it gets brighter. It's uh, quite a few processes going on there. If we turn it to the left, well, it turns into this sort of lo-fi filtery effect. So let me just demo that. <laughs> So it sounds like it gets a little bit more mono down here. So it's a mono, lo-fi, sort of filtery effect to nice and wide, punchy, sparkly piano. Best words I can use to describe it. Now, I don't think this song needs crazy lo-fi piano. I think it's going to be more towards this way. So let's get that set correctly. Perfect. So now let's have a look at that organ because the lo-fi effects actually sounds like that could work on the organ because I want to get that a little bit darker. Ooh. Yeah, that's working all right. Nice and jazzy. And it's, it's sort of like making it less of a feature which is working for me. Now, let's have a little go with doubler, see if that can help. No, it's not adding anything. Let's move across to the roads and see if that helps bring it out a little bit. That's nice. It's only subtle, but it's definitely just helping that Rhodes sit in the mix better without me having to lift it in volume. Now, let's move across to the backing vocals. Nice and straightforward. So let's use the voice centric just to kind of, again, bind them together to give the impression that they're one instrument. Let's increase the input. Intensity. A bit much. Okay, sounds nice there. And I want these to sit back a little bit in the mix. Again, not really using volume. I want to use, let's try some reverb, because I want the lead vocal that I'm going to look at next. I want that to sit right at the front of the mix, be right in your face. So let's just sit this back a little bit with some reverb. Maybe a little bit of doubler as well, just to increase the size of them. Yeah, let's do a, let's do a better AB there. Yeah, works for me. That's nice. So let's move across now to the lead vocal. And again, voice centric. That's nice, nice there. So let's move across to the final part, and that is using a couple of these Greg Wells plugins on the master. And let's start with the tone centric, just to add a bit more analog vibe to this. I don't know why you keep me hanging this way. I don't buy, you know, I just want to play. Yeah, I yearn for your tenderness, and I beg for your fuss, because I do have a heart. Bypass. It's 
very subtle. Let's leave it there for the minute and see how the mix centric will perform. Okay, sounds like I need to back off the intensity here a little bit. Back round. I don't know why you keep me hanging this way. I don't buy, you know, I just want to play. Yeah, I yearn for your tenderness and I beg for your fuss. Stop the clock. I would say that we're there. Short of doing a few fader throws and some automation, that sounds pretty good to me. I hope you guys saw how quick and easy it was to put that mix together with just these four plugins. I mean, they are really straightforward to use. I mean, I'm a big fan of these sort of one knob plugins because they just, they force you to use your ears. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. For more information on the Greg Wells series plugins by Waves, do check out the Waves website and let us know your thoughts on the Greg Wells series plugins in the comments below. I've been Dan from Pro Tools Expert and I'll catch you next time.